Hey, what is up? It's Blake here. I hope you're having a good day. And if you're not, you don't get the time back. Uh, so hopefully that might change. This video, uh, this live stream, I guess I should say, I bought a, a Goodwill liquidation box, a mystery box, you might call it, from Josh down in South Carolina. It's right here. Uh, I bought this from him back in July. And no, he didn't wait to send it until November. I waited to make a video on it until November. Uh, I had him film an intro for me, and I feel bad because I didn't, I'm not using it, obviously. But I just, between the time when I bought this and the time I asked him to, or the time I was about to make the video, I kind of saw my channel going in a different direction. So I just, I didn't want to, like, backtrack. Not that there's anything wrong with the box, not that I wanted to like slight Josh, who, who is, goes by the name Harry Tornado. For those of you who don't know, um, I just I just didn't think it made sense. Uh, here it is. Let me just take off my address from here so no one comes here and kills me. I'm not sure what's in here. He was selling these over the summer. Uh, a lot of Goodwills had problems with too much inventory. And uh, a few of them, a lot of them had the problem, and a few of them did th did something smart. Uh, <laughs> you, Harry Tornado just sent me five bucks. He said he doesn't know what's inside. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Josh, what we do on this channel when I get a super chat is uh, we we celebrate that with with the money with the money bell. So a big ding from for Josh. Uh, so I guess that brings the cost of this down to $195 with that nice $5 rebate. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what's in here. He doesn't know what's in here. So I think the best thing to do is, uh, is just to get started. And if you have any questions about resale stuff, how to make money online, any of that stuff, I will answer those uh, as they come up. But, um, I have a few things to talk about, you know, in the news and, uh, you know, this. David says, my two favorite YouTubers. Hello to you both. Hello, David. Hello, Doyle. How y'all doing? If you're watching, there's 50 of us here right now. Give me a big thumbs up. Helps the video a lot. Let me know where you're from, and let me know what kind of video Josh and I, Harry Tornado and I, should make together, because obviously, I screwed the pooch on uh, <laughs> this collaborative effort, but I like Josh, uh, and you should like him too. So uh, let's see. He says, "Good thing it was not. <laughs> good thing it was live animals or food. Neither would have made it sitting in a box for so long. Good thing it wasn't live animals. If it was, yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, man, what if he sent me something funny, like a joke, um, and I killed it? Hey, we got Nick Anderson in Flint Town. What's up, my hometown? We got Cubella in Lincoln, Nebraska. Trey in H Town, Houston." Uh, we got Dom in Louisville, Kentucky. All right. Let's open this up right now. It's uh, Goodwill stuff from South Carolina. So, that could mean anything. And I guess to make it fun, I'll just estimate what I think it sells for, or would sell for. Uh, because that's, that's a game. All right, what do we got? Oh, nice. Well, first off, 1984 Transformers Pillow. Right there it says 84. This is a great find. Um, I don't know what they're going for. When I, I guess I could look it up on eBay right now and tell you. What I do to like look things up is I go to eBay, and I'll, t I'll look up completed listings. So you can't see this process, but I'm just typing in 1984 Transformers Pillow. Maybe it's a throw pillow. I don't know. Wow, good thing I wasn't too, like, crazy <laughs> with the razor. I could have cut this and ruined it. It looks like these are going for about 25 to 30 bucks free shipping. So, uh, I actually... Oh, my gosh! You know what? This is from, uh... <laughs> he said something. He said, I actually found a sheet at Goodwill and paid a lady to make one for me, one of a kind. Wow, so this is a one of a kind uh, Harry Tornado special. <laughs> nice. 
We got Fiona here. We got Bryce Barbosa. Barbosa. Hello from Texas. WBK and Josh, thank you both for your content. I've been making money thanks to your guys' advice. I would love to see a collab on your thoughts on what items are your bread and butter. Nice. Dana says, I got ungated for DVDs for a hundred bucks. Woohoo! Lucked out on 888 lots and saw Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for one dollar brand new minimum 100 units. Nice. I'm actually selling that too. That same exact DVD. Very cool. Um, after submitting to Amazon 23 times, jumping through hoops, I resubmitted like I did for the first app and was approved in 15 minutes. Dana, love to hear that. Harry Tornado says, you can get 11 pillows out of uh, out of one, one pair of sheets. Jacqueline says, running errands while I'm watching. Hey, Jacqueline, we got David here. Hello, David. And Ricky Hart finally caught a live stream. So this pillow right here, yeah, one of 11, very rare. Um, I think I'll probably still, <laughs> I'll probably still sell it for maybe, um, probably 30 bucks. Maybe I might go up to 50. I'm not totally sure. It's a very unique item, so uh, we have a little bit of leeway there. So already we're looking at a pretty, uh, a pretty nice uh, item. What else do we have? We got a hat, AT and T. USA Olympics, I'd guess, uh, 96 Atlanta Olympics, but I'm not totally sure on that. I don't see a, um, I don't see a, uh, a year on here, but there was a lot of 96 Olympic stuff, uh, floating around. A little bit dirty, but nothing I can't clean up. Uh, I'll type in AT&T, ATT Olympic hat, and then if I don't find anything on there, uh, okay, yeah, there we go. Vintage AT&T hat. Looks like it's going for about 20 bucks. Cool. <laughs> what are the, uh, what are these called? Something, My Little Pony. A My Little Pony plush. Uh, is there a name on here? When I'm looking at plush animals, the way I, I look them up is usually on the tag, there's going to be either a name or a model number. And you can kind of, it's blurry, but you can get an idea of what I'm looking for. It's the bold number on top. It is a C2709. So for this, I don't go on eBay because not everyone has uh, the, the model number on eBay. But I'll type in Hasbro My Little Pony C2709. Hasbro My Little Pony C2709. When you Google that, uh, it, so it shows eh, nothing in particular right here. So that actually didn't work this time. The second number is B9820. Oh, here it is. It did show up. It's on Walmart. My Little Pony, the movie, Rainbow Dash, Pirate Pony. That's what this is. Uh, that's the Walmart listing on walmart.com. So then what I'm doing is I'll just copy and paste the title. And uh, I will uh, Google that. And then after I Google, I'll say plus Amazon. And that should bring up the Amazon listing. Because the way I would uh, I would sell this is on Amazon, and on Amazon it's going for it looks like $14.95 uh, new, probably ten bucks used. Uh, so probably assuming I'm I'm ungated, I'll sell this very good condition, and I'll probably get five bucks profit off of it. So what are we at? I'll, I'll keep track. So we're saying twenty, twenty, and then five. So we're at forty-five dollars plus the five bucks Josh gave me. We'll say we're at fifty bucks so far on those first three items. How fun. So, all right, what else do we got? Uh, I'm missing a few of the questions. I'm going to go back and read a few now. We got Dane Miller from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Dana says, for ungetting topicals, personal, and household and beauty, try Frontier Co-op. Lifetime membership, $10. No minimum, and their invoice is a dream. Good to know. I didn't know that before. I'm going to write that down. Frontier Co-op. And you guys should be taking notes too. I always say take notes during these because the amount of information shared in the chat is uh, is phenomenal. Everyone tells me it's Rainbow Dash. Well, thank you. But if you didn't know who it was, the way you could find out the name of that um the night the name of that animal uh, is um is what I just showed you. What else do we have? We got two. Looks like uh, quilting yarn things, turn granite yarn be 
These have a retail price of 20 bucks on them. Uh, two of them, Hobby Lobby uh, product brand. I don't know, uh, I don't see a barcode on these, so I couldn't scan them for uh, for eBay. But I think probably on, uh, on, on, I'm sorry, on Amazon, on eBay, let's see, it is uh, 270 yards Turin Yarnby. So th those are the keywords I'm, I'm uh, searching on, on eBay to figure out what it is. 270 yard Turin Granite Yarnby. Turin Granite Yardby. Yarnby, not Yardby. That makes more sense. They're not selling yards. And it looks like these are going for about, uh, well, I don't see this exact one, but it looks like this one, oh, this is the one sold for uh, 15 bucks. So if I can get like, if I can get 30 bucks free shipping off these two, that would be awesome. And that should bring me, I'm just going to estimate and I'm going to be very conservative in my estimations. Uh, that should get me another about, let's say 20 bucks. Let's see. Uh, Nick says, Frontier got me ungated in grocery. Awesome to hear. Brian says, checking in from SoCal. I want to start ordering pallets of merch, but maybe not books. Any re recommendations on any decent sites? Someone asked me this uh, earlier on my community page of YouTube. And really, I think that you have to go and search every pallet. You know, there's no uh, website that is a guaranteed win. So I'm not going to recommend a website. What I'm going to recommend instead is... Look, go go to liquidation.com, go to bstock.com, go to techliquidators.com, uh, go to, those are the ones off the top of my head, and just go through like 25 pallets and price them out. Because especially if you're a beginner, you're going to want to spend 10 times more time than I spend on average. Because I've already done that. I've already learned this. You haven't learned it. And it isn't the kind of stuff that there's like rules and processes for. It's such like creative work that you have to find new ways to figure out what things are worth or how they're priced that you can't give like, you know, oh, buy your tires at Discount Tire because they have their best deals. It isn't really like that. It's more, you know, there's an, a few options, but you really, really, really should be doing it yourself um, and not taking anyone's recommendation on like guaranteed money because in this line of business, there is no, no guaranteed money. Matt Scoggin says, I still want to know if you can make a throw from second base. That's a reference to Chuck Knobloch. He was a baseball player for the Minnesota Twins and the New York Yankees. Uh, those are the teams that I know for sure he played from. I do have an uncle named Chuck, but there is no relation. Interestingly enough, I threw javelin in college, so I feel very confident that, I, yes, I can. I can make a throw from second base. Uh, Mark says, anyone know why my Rollo is trying to print wrong in eBay? It worked right on my old computer. I don't like Rollo brand. Everyone on YouTube likes Rollo. I don't like them. I don't like a lot of their business practices. So I say you throw it out the window and buy yourself a nice Dymo. Buy yourself a Dymo. Buy yourself a Zebra. Stay away from Rollo. They're not really bringing much to the table, in my opinion. Okie dokie. Uh, Duran says, how do you sell books? Uh, if it's, it's always on Amazon, pretty much. Unless it's like autographed or very rare than eBay, but for books on Amazon, I'm trying to do mostly FBA, but if the, book, if the book is worth a decent amount, and it really depends on the day, maybe I'll do this for 25, maybe I'm in a bad mood, and I'll say, oh, I gotta make 50 bucks, I don't know. Uh, if it's below like two and a half million sales rank, then I'm going to um, FBM it out of my warehouse, I'll just store them here, and if it's below that, uh, then I'll do um, FBA. Harry says, hey man, Rollo is awesome. I just don't like their business practices. I know how they make money, and they're just taking private label products off of uh, Alibaba and like patenting the color. And uh, they're very litigious about any sort of like bad PR. They're just not the kind of company that I want to give my money to because I don't do business like that. I'm all about transparency and like providing value. And they're just like kind of using uh, these like litigious strategies to corner the market. And I don't, I don't like that. I do not recommend them. I recommend Dymo or Zebra because they're the people who are like innovating, making new products and like making things better. And yeah, Rollo has an app and oh, they're so great, but I just don't, I just don't like them. Is it because of rally roots? Absolutely not. No, 
Anyone who pushes them, I don't care. It's their prerogative. Good, make some money off of them. But I just don't like the company who owns Rollo. I do not like how they do business. It's a personal thing with me. You, if you, they work for you, fine, use them. But I'm just not going to recommend a company that I don't think they're uh, running their business the, the way that I would, I would do it. Howard says, hello from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Looking for a way to take sticker adhesive off softcover books without marring the surface or melting the colors. Goo Gone does not work on soft colors. Uh, so Howard, I have a video called How to Remove Adhesive on my YouTube channel. I think it's also in the FAQ on my website. The website is wpkultra.com slash FAQ. So I would go there and check that out. And if it's not there, go to my YouTube page and check it out that way. Uh, let's see. Fiona says, I took your advice and started sourcing books from the Dollar Tree. Can I still list them on Amazon as new, even though there are some dings? I would not recommend doing that, no. If it's, if it's not, uh, if there are dings on a book, then I would say it's going to be like new at best. Uh, where else do we got? Mark says, they send me a bunch of free labels after it didn't work when I bought one off Facebook used, a Rollo printer. Yeah, you can get free 6x8 labels from UPS, too, or whatever the, the correct sign. Is it 6x8? No, it's 4x6. You can get 4x6 labels for free from UPS. Um, they are not, they're not really a very scarce resource. Uh, Michelle's Guide to Life. Hey, fellow Aggie, are you talking about New Mexico State? Because if you are, yes, we are alumni together. Let's see, Gravity Goods. I love how upfront, honest, and sometimes blunt you are. I hate people being fake online. Be you. Those who matter won't mind, and those who mind, fuck them. <laughs> they don't matter. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's not good. This is like a Gary V thing to say, but it's not good ROI to be someone you're not. It's better ROI to be authentic and genuine. Gary Vaynerchuk is Gary V, and uh, you might have some problems with him, but the man is extremely successful, and I like his mentality. So yeah, just to be totally clear, if anyone is pushing Rollo, that is their right to do that. If they're getting affiliate payments, good for them. I love people making money by showing information, that kind of stuff. It's the actual company that I don't really like that much. And that's fine. I don't have to like every single company, you know? It's just everyone can have their own, uh, their own predilections towards, you know, uh, how they do business. Dana says, question, what is your cutoff sales rank for PC games for Amazon? Also, what is vaulted, i.e. Funko Pops? So vaulted means they're discontinued, essentially. Sometimes they unvault things. Sometimes they add, like, newer iterations or permutations, I guess you might call it. Um, on these vaulted Funko Pops, but generally, uh, once it's taken off the shelves, once it's no longer in production, the value goes up, and they say it's vaulted as opposed to discontinued, and I think that's kind of referencing, like, the Disney vault. Um, at least that's how I, I think of it, personally. Jacqueline says, make sure you mention remainder marks if they are on the book. Uh, it will save you returns. I saw a lot of Dollar Tree books liking you, and they sail well for me that way. Uh, so, I, yeah, what, what Jacqueline's saying is that uh, look on the bottom of your book. I actually have a book with a remainder mark right here. Uh, the powerful, the power of mindful learning. I bought this to read myself, uh, but it does have a remainder mark on the bottom. So this is what it is. Sometimes it's only a dot. Sometimes it's an X. Uh, sometimes they will make a slash through the barcode, although you're going to see that more on CDs or video games. Um, but that's a remainder mark, and so watch out for those, because the book can seem, this book is, I would say, if it weren't for, uh, that remainder mark, I would be surprised if this book wasn't a new condition. Um, but yeah, watch out for those. So thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Amra Karma says, WBK is my Gary V. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> Jacqueline says, sorry, like new, talk to text. Yeah, I knew what you meant. I, I, I got the idea. Don't worry about it. Uh, Michael S. says, been a long time since I've been around. Hair is getting long. Yes, m me too. Or you're talking about me, and in that case, you're correct. Excited to see how I can jump back in. 
So for those of you who are new or been gone for a while, I'm kind of expanding the breadth of content my channel produces. Whereas for the past few years, it's been retail arbitrage, thrift stores, online arbitrage a little bit. I want to begin making more content about, um, <laughs> more content, I, saw, I read a funny comment, more content about like affiliate marketing, about ways you can make money online that's not reselling, uh, just because I think I can help in ways like that. Baron Von Deel says, predilection, that's a big word for a reseller. Yes, but I'm a man of many skills. Uh, Dan says, what's up, WBK? How sports cards treating you? I got a bunch over there, and I'm just pricing them high, and I'm seeing how the market reacts. I have mostly football cards, so I'm seeing how prices go during, um, during uh, the playoffs. Kyle Hancock says, hey, Blake, I have some 1980s Mike Tyson fights on VHS home recordings, HBO Recorded. Do you have any idea if this will be a problem on eBay like a Vero? I have purchased Black Sabbath uh, VHS tapes on Amazon or on YouTube. I'm sorry. Let me restart. I've purchased Black Sabbath concert recordings on VHS on eBay, and uh, I bought those there. I didn't sell them, but I bought them. So those were fine, apparently. But I don't, I don't think you're going to be in, in trouble, but I don't know for sure. Harry Tornado says, more mystery box items. I'm dying of curiosity over here. Yeah, that's the guy who sold me this. Okay, let's get back to those now. All right, we got some boppets. Nice. So if you're a, a fan of my channel, you know that I say boppets are really great money. The Boppet XT will go for between like 40 and 60 bucks. And the Boppet Extreme 2, I have never sold one of these. I don't know what it goes for. Uh, I don't know how it's different. I guess, uh, yeah, it looks almost identical. They're pretty much identical. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe different sounds. It looks kind of like spooky. It's green on one side. Um, I'll test both these, make sure they're not like corroded and nasty. But the good thing about these boppets is they're so heavy duty. And as you open these up, you can see that they're like reinforced in multiple places. They don't really break. Um, I had a I had my first boppet that I bought at a store that wasn't like powering on uh, because the batteries were dead. My, the, for, for the first time ever, uh, it didn't work. And what I had to redo, what I had to do to make it work actually, was um. <laughs> this is kind of this is this okay. So here's a lesson. Here's a lesson in mistakes that Blake makes. So I was so confident that my boppets would work that I bought a few and I listed them on Amazon, uh, Margin Fulfilled, without testing them. Stupid, dumb mistake, right? So it, it sells, and before it sells, I test it just to make sure that I was right. And I was wrong. It was my last Boppet uh, X XT or Extreme, one of the two, and it didn't work. Uh, I opened up the battery panel, and there it was so much corrosion from the um, from the battery, uh, so much corrosion from the battery. What's it called? Let me get right there. It's bugging me. So much corrosion from the battery acid that I had to actually cut off one of the contact points from this busted TI eighty three calculator that I've been like I took the uh, I took the back panel off to put on a different one and now it's just like being salvaged. I had to take off that battery panel contact point. You can see I cut it out and stick it into the, the battery point on this, just so it would power on. Um, I ended up buying 100 contact points off eBay, but they didn't get there until two days after I shipped it out. Uh, but that just shows you, there's there's workarounds for a lot of stuff. You know, just because something doesn't work doesn't mean it's outside of your repair, even if you have no, like, actual skills. John Blitch says, there's a YouTube series idea for you. Blake makes mistakes. Uh, I would never be done with that. <laughs> that would be a very uh, long YouTube series. DD says, do you have any suggestions on buying books on OfferUp? I have not done it. I see a lot of people selling books, stating the books are unsorted. But I believe these are Amazon sellers selling their no-good flops. Yeah, that could be totally true. Um, it, you know, the only way you're ever going to know is if you buy a pallet and then price it out. That's the only way you're gonna know. Um, there's no like secret decoder ring that you can like put over their picture, be like, oh, it's actually used. You're gonna have to buy it. 
consider it just a learning experience. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from buying that pallet, so why not do it? I would say don't pay more than like 50 or 100 bucks for it. Um, but it's, uh, it's a good way to learn. Okay, uh, Dana says, I go to Amazon Warehouse for office supplies, among other items. Amazon Outlet is good for books, but make sure you have sales history. Amazon lets books go for pennies on the dollar. Good tip. Baron Von Deel says, I see a Home Depot bucket behind you. I think Chick-fil-A sells their pickle buckets for a dollar. Haven't checked in a while. Huh, interesting. There are no Chick-fil-A's around me, uh, but good to know. Gravity Goods. I just sold one recently, but it wasn't a fancy one. Bop it. Yeah, the original stick bop it sell pretty good, too. Let's see. Sabina says, listening while out on my first sourcing trip. Congratulations. Got 100 books listed for free by going through my stuff and finding some of the dumps. Sabina, good job. Everyone, round of applause for Sabina. She has the right attitude, and that kind of initiative is what makes you money. Let's see, we've got Megan. Do you use Amazon ranking when sourcing shoes for eBay? No, I don't do that. I don't really sell shoes on eBay. Uh, when I sell things on eBay, I'm going off completed listings. Baron Von Deel says, I started to carry a small flashlight to scrutinize dark colored items. Look on darker shelves and a mini screwdriver to open and inspect battery compartments. That is a good tip, Baron Von Deels. I know someone, uh, Sheridan, I think, at least he used to do this, he would actually bring his own little TV into thrift stores uh, with some AV cords to test, uh, to test VCRs. And hey, while you're here, we have 122 of us here Give the video a big thumbs up. I'm going to get back to the stuff in the box real quick, just answering a few questions. Ricky Hart says, Are you still sending out emails? I haven't received one lately, so I wanted to ask, not in spam or anything. Uh, I've only sent out two or three from my website, wbkultra.com. I'm not sure exactly how I want to do it. I thought about for a while doing like a, a weekly roundup, but again, I'm... Um, I'm not totally sure what the best way to utilize that is because I know you guys are all very busy and I don't want to waste your time. Janine Saffel says, I am learning a lot from you. I have a tax and bookkeeping service and I am adding reselling to my streams of income. Good job, Janine. Something I've wanted to do for years. Thank you for the content. You are welcome. Mr. Leon says, hey man, it's Brandon again. So I'm feeling really down because none of the things I have tried to do have worked to make money. It's pennies that I'm making with a ton of FBA fees, like 50% fees. So Mr. Leon, you are looking at this the wrong way. Don't care about fees. Care about profit. If you're making things and you're making pennies off of it, the things you're sourcing are too cheap. You have to buy things that sell for more money, right? And so maybe that means instead of buying 15 books at a thrift store, you buy one book at a thrift store. But that's how you're going to grow as a seller. That's how you're going to get better at sourcing. You can't just do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. You have to go through your results, pare them down, refine them, find the things that work, and amplify that out. Uh, yeah, hit that like button. Exactly. Andrea says, Northville and Novi have Chick-fil-A. Interesting. I'm in Ypsilanti, and I'm not going to drive 25 or 45 minutes for a pickle bucket. Um, but good to know, because Chick-fil-A does have, uh, they do have um, millet buns, which are gluten-free. Mark says, how do you get ungated if you're newer to Amazon? Everyone else has been ungated because they have been around for years. Mark, stop complaining. That's not true. That's absolutely not true, and you're making excuses. You get ungated two ways. One, through your sales history, and two, uh, by getting invoices. So when I started my account, I was not ungated for everything. I had to build up sales, and I wasn't getting um, auto-ungated until like six months or a year after I started selling like ten to $15,000 a month. 
It's not like, oh, everyone, it's so easy. No, people put work in and you're just discounting their work. I don't know why you're doing that, but don't have that attitude. It's not going to help you at all. Andrea, uh, uh, let's see. Sabina says, these encouraging shout outs warm my heart. And they're not just encouraging. If you're saying dumb shit, I'm going to call you out. I'm just trying to let everyone know that I'm not just trying to be like all oh, fake and positive. I think that, yes, you encourage the correct things, but if someone's complaining or someone's being negative or someone's not helping themselves, you gotta call that out too. That's, in my opinion, what um, being like a content creator who's trying to guide people does. You help people even if they don't think they need the help that they need. James says, how do you price a book if it's on Amazon with picture but none for sale? Thanks. I price high, as high as they'll let me. Uh, I will pr probably price it at like 200 bucks, and that's oftentimes going to get you an inactive um, price listing because it's too high and Amazon has a lot more uh, pricing rules. And so after it goes live and is inactive, then I lower the price by 10 bucks uh, until it goes active. You can do that with books. You cannot do that with essentials. We saw all the price control nonsense that happened last March, and you can guarantee yourself that there are going to be states that go after sellers who sell toilet paper, who sell stuff that people just complain about because they can't get it in stores. They're going to go after those people. They're not going to go after someone selling a book that's discontinued for 100 bucks. They're going to go after people selling essentials. So you can't use that strategy with essentials, as they call it. Let's see. Megan says, thank you. How much uh, worth of inventory would recommend having at one time to make it consistent sales? There's no magic number for that at all. Um, what are you selling? What's your sell through rate? And then you can like reverse engineer off of that. Baron Von Deel says, looking for unicorns and rainbow responses to your issues? Not here. Keep looking. Yeah, absolutely. I try and be very pragmatic uh, at all times. The Region Flipper says, just got a $300 Amazon return because some kid ordered it without permission. That sucks, but that's, that's life. You know, uh, miners can't do that kind of stuff. If they're using like their parents' credit card. That's just, uh, that's the way it goes. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, if it's, uh, if the item has been opened, you can still withhold part of the return. If it's merchant fulfilled, they might open an A to Z case against you, but assuming you follow all the rules, um, you should win that. I had this happen to me. That's why I'm talking about it. I had someone buy a $500 DVD set and they returned it open saying, oh, I don't need it anymore. What they did was, is they ripped it off out of their computer. So I refunded them 50%. They opened an A to Z case. Um, they lost it. They opened another one. They lost that. So I think Amazon is getting better uh, about A to Z cases, about safety claims, about protecting sellers. Although certainly there are thousands of examples where the exact opposite happens and some someone gets screwed over. Let's see. David says, in order to make money, you have to get off your ass and open your mind. You know, you can sit down and do it, but you certainly have to be creative and you have to be dedicated. Gravity Good says, equal opportunist with coaching. Great, Blake. <laughs> we appreciate your attitude adjustments. We all need to hear this for motivation. Yeah, I want to also say everyone here is welcome. If I say something that, that hurts your feelings, I'm not saying leave. I'm not saying you can't be here, okay? A lot... Americans in particular, um, and a lot of cultures, I guess, who are not very direct, although Americans are direct, uh, a lot of Americans in particular are very sensitive to criticism. That doesn't mean shut down and kill yourself. That means work on this because I have faith in you that you can be better than you are now. We have this idea like, oh, I'm perfect now. Everything's, I should love myself for who I am. Yeah, I guess so. But that doesn't mean just be complacent with your flaws. Uh, that's, that's one of the biggest things that ticks me off about people <laughs> in general. Okay, let's open up a few more of these mystery box items, and then I'll get back to the questions. We got some shoes. 
These, uh, I'd say maybe a size 13 Nike basketball shoes. They're 12s. Uh, I don't know what these are. The way you look up Nike shoes is there is a, uh, a number right here above the barcode. You can't really see what it says. It's kind of blurry. This one happens to be uh, 749-645-405. And my understanding is that the dash, that is uh, that 405, is the color of the shoes. And that uh, 749 645 um, is going to be like the model. So I'm not sure what these go for. Hyper Dunk 2015s. We'll just look that up. Nike Hyper Dunk 2015. And uh, it looks like these are going for about 15 bucks. Uh, you know, shoe, I don't really sell a lot of shoes. These are in good condition. Probably what I'll do is I'll put them at like 30 bucks free shipping, let them sit for six months, and then sell them. That's how long. It'll probably sell next summer. Maybe. I don't know for sure. We'll say 15 bucks on those. Another pair of shoes. These are, uh, they all have good soles. These are Asics. Uh, I don't know what kind of Asics they are. Um, let's see if we can tell. Asics B251N. A6B251N. A6B251N. A gosh, come on. A6B251N. Uh, these are A6 Gel 114OV indoor. Oh, they're indoor volleyball shoes. I was going to say, why do they have the rubber sole like that? Um, yeah, Josh just said they're volleyball shoes. Yes, these are volleyball shoes. And uh, it looks like I'll get about uh, probably 30 bucks for them. We'll say 20 bucks profit, you know, just to be, just, just to keep the addition easy. So far, we are up to, uh, let's see, $95 off the initial $200 investment. And we're about half done. Let's see if Josh ripped me off. I'm just kidding. He didn't rip me off. What else do we got? Uh, let's see. Uh, Rebecca says, late to the party, but glad I made it. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Yeah, I hope you're on the good mood. What I said in the beginning of the video was, I hope you're in a good mood because you don't get this time back. That's, you know, that, that's, uh, that's one of the, the facts we all live with. The time that we spend, we don't get back. Might as well use it to the, uh, the most, uh, to be, might as well make it as good as it can be. That's what I'll say. Jesse says, hey, WBK, hi from Illinois. Hello. Stacy R. Kari says, I started a good sourcing goodwills and retail arbitrage. Love your initiative. Sales have been picking up within the last two days. Yes. My seven-year-old and I are finding treasures, and she is telling me how to bundle things to make more money. Stacy. I cannot tell you how much that warms my heart to hear that not only are you making money, but you're passing on the knowledge. That's so, so good to hear. Big round of applause for Stacy. Stacy, I'm clapping for you. And everyone at home, clap for Stacy too. TL Treasures says, Small Fry here. Has eBay been slow? Stacy says it hasn't. Not for me either. Mr. Leon says, I was in a nine to five, but after COVID, uh, I was determined not to have a real job for a while. Found your Taco Bell hot sauce video. Any tips on how to determine a high profit item? I have 20 bucks to invest. So I would say books. It depends where you are. If you're somewhere that has thrift stores, uh, I would see which thrift store chain has the cheapest books and I would source books. Because most likely, uh, some, some areas sell books for three bucks. Those areas suck. Uh, in my area, you can get books for a quarter or 50 cents at their hardcover at some thrift stores. You can get, and on some time, some days, they have 10 for a dollar media days. Uh, what you can also do is maybe if you only have 20 bucks, maybe reinvesting that isn't the best idea for you. Maybe you should hold on to that and you should look for free things you can sell. So free things around your house, or here's like a next level way to get free stuff. Go on Facebook Marketplace and see who's giving away books for free because there are people giving away books, giving away tons of stuff for free, 
and you can sell that stuff. Uh, that's what I'd recommend you do. I would say, yeah, don't probably don't start selling, uh, investing until you have a better idea of how it works, because that twenty bucks can go fast. Denise says, "Oh, we got five bucks from Firecrest. Firecrest, thank you so much. They sent me a sticker that says hype. Ready? And for those of you who don't know, if we hit fifty dollars in donations." We uh, get to hear the money bugle. What is the money bugle, you might ask? This is the money bugle. This is the money bugle. And uh, I, I use this to make a very loud noise. And it makes your dogs go crazy. And it ruins your, um, ruins your headphones. Uh, and it's fun for everyone. So let's talk about... Uh, let's see, where were we recently? Denise says, I worked hard for six months selling books and put all that money into getting ungated and as many things as I could afford, then switch to those categories. Denise, you're doing it right! Man, I love to see people who take the formula that I try and share with you and succeed at it. That just makes me feel so good. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Mr. Leone says, thank you, Denise, taking that advice. Oh, God, you guys are great. You guys are the, just the, the, the attitudes in these. Do you know how hard it is to get strangers on the internet to be supportive of each other? That's like half of what I do as a content creator is just like make sure that the attitudes in our Facebook group are attitudes that help people. Make sure that there's just like a, a you know, I, I'm not one of those people who believe like, oh, manifest your dreams and it'll work. But I do really believe that if everyone's acting in a positive way, uh, it benefits everyone involved. You know, that, that, that that's the, the way I look at it. Uh, Harry Tornado says, 35 uh, bucks, free shipping all day, may take until next year to sell. Talking about these volleyball shoes. And I think you're right. I think you're right. For those of you who don't know, this video, I bought a $200 mystery Goodwill box from Mr. Harry Tornado. I'm sure all of you know his YouTube channel. If you don't, check him out. He is a uh, very successful man from South Carolina uh, with a beard like myself. Although, I think he has a red beard, right? What are you, you, What is that? Varnell? German? High German, probably? Oh, jeez, we're getting too much money. So we got 20 bucks from Josh, um, and then we got five bucks from Janine. So Janine, uh, you you get the first ding. So thank you very much, Janine. And Mr. Harry Tornado, only five bucks away from the money bugle. We're actually 16 bucks away because YouTube takes like half of your money. <laughs> Sorry, but five bucks for you. Um... That maybe I've been lying about how I do this, I guess. But when, when I see 50 on my screen, that's when I blow all your eardrums out. So uh, let's get back to the questions. Let me see. Andrea Kaminsky says, Mr. Leon, with everyone purging stuff, try and get free items and scanning. Pick up books for free. Yeah, look, look for free stuff on Facebook, on Craigslist. That's what I would say uh, is a great fast money tip for anyone who's just getting started. Pewter Pole says, I have those same ASICs in my store. Well, I'm going to undercut your price. Just kidding. No, I'm not. I'm going to price at 35 bucks, and I'll hopefully take good pictures. Uh, let's see. Allison says, awesome, Stacy. Stacy, good job. Jesse says, question, talk about repricers. Do you use one, and what's your strategy with your settings? I found you're a price it vid that's a couple years old, wondering if your approach has changed. So I turned off my repricer for pretty much everything except video games and books. Um, there's just so much weird stuff going on with like Amazon, with an Amazon pricing stuff. Uh, and also, I've noticed that there have been a lot of people who are tanking the price and then buying up everyone who reprices their stuff too. Um, that's just like my anecdotal experience. But one of the reasons I turned off my repricer is because someone bought, um, it was, no, it wasn't Boppets. It was um, plug and play 
video games kind of like this. Not this one, but a different a different game. Someone bought eight of them from me for under 10 bucks. So I think what happened is someone, I think that was sabotage personally. And so I, I didn't cancel the sale. I said, okay, you beat me on this time, whatever. And instead of like getting pissed off, I learned from it. And I stopped repricing for two reasons. One, that scam, that I, that potential scam. But also, like I said, 20 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, whatever it was, there are so many states who are going to go after Amazon third-party sellers for what they consider to be price gouging, which in my opinion is a bullshit term that's just like made up and not real. You can ask any economist that uh, deals with like uh, scarcity, price gouging just signals to producers to make more. That's all it does. It doesn't stop anyone from getting what they need, unless it's like insulin or water or something. You can't price gouge on a DVD player. But whatever, you know, that's the world we live in, so I'm gonna play by their rules, and I'm gonna recommend you do too. That being said, that's why I'm no longer repricing stuff, because one of the ways I often reprice things uh, was using Reprice its intelligent pricing setting, and that would raise prices um, depending on how many other sellers there were. So in reference to the person's question about my old Reprice it vid, yeah, I think that's still probably 90% valid, um, but I don't, maybe I should go through and, people are saying, talking about Aura a lot. I've never used Aura, but I think Aura has uh, an affiliate program, and in my opinion, all reprices are pretty much the same. They do pretty much the same thing. So I don't have a reason to recommend one over the other. Um, but if I do get a little bit of kickback from them and the service is identical, then of course I'd recommend the one that pays me. Um, I haven't reviewed it yet, so I'm not going to, but just um, that's like my mentality on that right now. Uh, let's see. So that was Jesse's question. Dana says, I'm 54 and I just hope I set up my business well so grandkids can have an option in this crazy world. Dana, I think you're doing the right thing. I really respect that a lot. Rebecca says, Harry Tornado in the chat too? Best Wednesday ever. Love you both. Yeah, all you gotta do is give them 200 bucks and it'll show up in your live stream. <laughs> That's how much the box that I bought cost. I'm just giving them a hard time. Josh is a great guy. He, him and I talk. He's like probably one of three resellers that I talked I talked to him, I talked to Eric the College Picker, and I talked to a local dude occasionally, but probably mostly I talked to Josh and Eric the most. I think that they are uh, I think that they're straight shooters. There's a lot of shasty people who resell stuff. Did you guys know that? <laughs> Ready Branded says, I have made a killing buying used printers off Facebook Marketplace to resell on Amazon FBA. I've made at least 4,500 bucks so far, third month selling, some sold for over 200. Absolutely, I love selling printers too. The only issue is a lot of the times, uh, the person who buys them doesn't know what the heck they're doing. And so I have higher returns on printers than I do anything else. It used to be VCRs were my highest return item, but now it's uh, printers. Nick Anderson says, is the book category gated? No, it's not. That's why I say everyone should do this because I have yet to talk to someone who lacks the mental capabilities to make 60 grand a year selling books on Amazon. You have to be some special kind of stupid to not be able to do that. It takes a lot of work, potentially, but it's so simple. It's so just like, it's the easiest way, in my opinion, to make money online. So you're not gated. You're going to have very few returns. My recommendation is sell everything in acceptable condition to avoid angry customers. I just got a customer who gave me two-star feedback because I put a book in good condition. And they said, oh, it's acceptable condition. So I said, okay, I'll replace it for you. And they haven't gotten back to me yet. But that's just an example of like even someone like me who thinks he knows the rules uh, still gets screwed over. And that two-star feedback is not gonna do anything to my account, but it's just annoying. It's annoying to have to deal with people like that. Unsoul says, oh, I love that bell. Thank you. I like it too. I think it's very uh, unique. Um, I got this off Mercari, actually. 
I paid 15 bucks for it on Mercari, and uh, it's probably the most expensive thing in relation to what I could have paid that I bought myself. Uh, you can buy these little bells. I could have bought just like a bell for like two bucks, but I wanted to have a nice one. Um, I also like, I like cranes and herons a lot too. I think they're cool animals. Okay, so we need, we need uh, 16 more bucks in the super chat and uh, we're gonna use the money bugle. Or maybe 32, I don't know how it works. I don't know what percentage uh, you, uh, eBay, I don't know what percentage YouTube takes, I, I don't remember. Man, Josh's 20 bucks is like still still hanging up there. I wonder if when it if it'll be added once it goes off the screen. I don't know. I don't know how the rules work. Uh, Mr. Leon says, "Sorry, just in a stressed place and wasn't thinking my best. Really appreciate you guys. Dude, don't worry about it. If you're stressed out, don't worry. Just take a step back uh, and figure out, okay, what's my goal? Your goal is to make money, you know, is to have more money in your account." What's the easiest way to uh, make more money when you have no money? And I think that's to, you know, give things away that you either have for free. I mean, sorry, sell things you have for free or sell your time, which is not ideal. Um, but again, if you have no money, you're kind of limited in your options. Bryce Barabosa says, I found a vintage wool jacket at the Goodwill bins for like three bucks that is selling for over a hundred bucks on eBay. Keep looking, be patient pricing items. You never know what you might find. Yes, great, great tip, but I still think if you only have 20 bucks, I think free things are your best bet. Uh, let's see, Dana says, just got approved for Hasbro by using my Monopoly invoice so I could sell Risk. Make it work. It's a good day today. Dana, you are taking all the advice that I've given that lots of other resellers give and you're putting it into action. That's so cool to hear. Goat Cheese McGee says, ready branded. I did the same thing with printers for six months. Be careful. I started getting tons of returns. Yeah, tons of returns. I had that same experience too. It happens, but if you're testing them, you probably can be safe. And I'm sure he's testing them. Okie dokie. So, we've got, uh, let's see. We've got a little more time left. We're at the, the, the 50 minute mark. I'm going to get out of here in an hour. I got to leave at 145. So uh, don't worry. You have 60 minutes left to ask me any questions you have. Um, I have a few talking points that I can get into if, if the stream dies down. But you guys have been so great week after week that I don't think we're going to have to get to go to those. Sabina says, save the 20 bucks for shipping. Get free books. I find lots of books at the swap meet at the dump. Oh, good point, good point. Thomas Murillo says, hey, y'all, happy hump day. <laughs> I'm going to put a picture of the camel. Uh, Hair Tornado says, if I don't hear the bugle, I will scream. I don't make the rules, Josh. I don't make the rules. <laughs> That's funny because I did make the rules. <laughs> Long John, are you from Philly? You're from Philly. I know you are. Just got hit. With my first eBay 10% invoice. So much for free listings. I think the free means no listing fees, right? They say, yup! From my girlfriend's from Philly. So I know all your guys slang. I know about the water ice. <laughs> uh, although what's funny though is she's losing her accent living with me because my Michigan accent is so strong. Baron Von Deals. Oh, sorry. We got a Flint comment, so I got to read that first. Hey, Walter. Was in Flint last week setting up a seasonal store. Went to some of the thrift stores while there. Not as much stock in my area here in West Michigan, but prices are way better. Yeah, I would say the best thrift store in Flint is actually in like, um, uh, you got to go north to like Clio. There's one I like there a lot. Uh, there's one in Fenton that's okay. And there's one in um, Clarkston that's really good. The Clarkston Goodwill has some huge wins. What is a repricer? A repricer is um, uh, an automated tool that changes your pricing on Amazon to hit the buy box or to be the lowest price or to be the highest price or whatever you want to set it for. Melanin, 
Melianin says eBay said I was price gouging for a vintage bottle of perfume. Shake my head. Yeah, that's stupid. I hate people who complain about prices. They're so entitled and pathetic. Unless it's like water. If it's like that kind of stuff, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about luxury goods, like perfume. Uh, Baron Von Diel says, have you considered opening a retail outlet like, re like Resale Rabbit? Or maybe just a final liquidation before your move. Yeah, I'm taking things to an auction in Flint. That's how I'm liquidating. But most likely, I'm just going to... I mean, a, a lot of this stuff is worthless. Unfortunately, that's the truth. A lot of the stuff in my warehouse is worth so little that for me to sell it, I would not make my money back because it's like, oh, here's like textbooks, you know, from 1980. Just like stuff like that that has no value at all. And it's in such small quantities that I can't really bulk it up. And so I'm kind of just like going through and that that's definitely what I have to work on is being more proactive about cleaning out this spot. Thomas Morello says, I just got the gouge letter on eBay. Same item was selling two, uh, 3X what I was selling. Can't figure out what they were considered a preferred vendor. I was not. Yeah, so you have to be, you have to have a, a, a business account on eBay. I, I listened to um, uh, Bearded Pickers live stream yesterday, and he talked about how you have to be a business seller and you have to have invoices to sell that kind of stuff, PPE. Um, I don't know. I don't do that. I'm staying as far away as I can. I do not want any headaches ever again in my life. I had enough head headaches this year uh, to last me until I die. Let's see. Where were we? Pewter Pulls says, oh, we got five bucks. We got five bucks from Life by Melinda. So Life by Melinda, thank you very much. You, Harry Tornado, and Hustle at Home Mom have been my mentors this year. Never be able to repay any of you. Thanks for the freedom. Life by Melinda, you are welcome. And I'm sure that Josh and Ashley agree with me. Although I've never talked to Hustle at, Home, Hustle at Home Mom, or I don't know who that is, but I'm sure that she feels the same way I do. Where were we? We're only uh, $11 away from the money bugle too, by the way. Let's go through another. I kind of lost my spot in the, in the live stream chat, so we're going to go through a few more items now. Aerogel. We call this Aerogel because this is hairspray? Hair finishing spray. <laughs> is this stuff discontinued? Josh, you broke the law. You broke the law when you sent me this priority mail. You see that? Extremely flammable. You didn't put a sticker on just I'm not even gonna bring it up so the the law up until like January of 2021 is if you sold aerosol stuff and no I'm, I'm just but I'm just yanking this chain I'm, I'm being hard on them um, I'm gonna get a sticker so if you were to sell hand sanitizer for example on eBay uh, up until I think it's January uh, what you have to do is put one of these stickers on and ship it ground. This is a ORMD sticker. I have these because I sell a lot of aerosol products. Uh, you gotta ship it like, you know, parcel select or UPS ground or whatever the heck, heck FedEx version is. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Um, so technically, even though obviously it's not a big deal he did this, if you were to sell these on eBay, which when I do, when I put this in a box, I'm going to have to label it ORMD, um, assuming it sells before January, because, and I, you know, fact check me on this, because I might be wrong. Um, I believe that they're re removing that restraint uh, in January. Let's see, how much, is, how much is this worth? Aerogel, 10.5 ounces. If it's discontinued, Aerogel, 10.5, it could be worth like 50 bucks. $19. Cool. Uh, one sold for 24 Huh. So maybe this is discontinued. I don't know. I don't see like a year on it. 
It looks kind of like 90s. Got 90s vibes. I don't know. Yeah, 20 look probably 25 bucks I can get this for 25 bucks. Uh it weighs uh, I'll put it in a box. I, I'll have to do it. You, I can't even if it weighs under a pound. I can't ship it um, first class mail because that goes in the air, and I don't want to break the rules um, and kill someone perhaps. Although that's not going to happen. Uh, so I'll ship it partial select for like six bucks, and we'll say I make another. Uh, we'll say I make fifteen bucks off of it. So that puts us up to uh, that puts us up at one ten on the uh, on the box so far. A backpack. Oh, a Malboro backpack. I should sell this to Vogue Squared. He's a, a guy I know who lives right by me. Um, I think these go for 25 bucks. Maybe. Well, who knows now? The resale market is nuts. Marlboro backpack. Marlboro backpack. I read an article uh, the other day that said that the, the resale market is going to be um, uh, as long... What's it called? The resale market is going to be worth almost $70 billion by 2029. Josh said you can ship these first class mail as long as I have one of those ground stickers on. So I guess you can. I guess you can do it first class mail as long as it has one of these. I thought you had to select partial select, but apparently not. So thank you for the tip, Josh. I'm amazed you're still here. You've been here the whole freaking time. Where were we? Kunarov says, yeah, just try selling PPE on eBay. Good luck. Let me know if anybody needs disposable masks. Yeah, what, what I have uh, seen people doing is they've been taking those to local auctions because pretty much local auctions are the only place you can sell those without dealing with annoying customers. Marlboro. How do you say it? Did I say it wrong? I don't know. I don't smoke cigarettes. Marlboro backpack. It looks like if you have the duffel bag set, it sells for 100 bucks. The backpack alone sells for like $35. That one's really red, really fresh condition. So we'll say we'll say 25 bucks off of it. And that puts us at uh, 135. Harry Tornado says, "I thought that too." It took talking to many USPS peeps to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I did the same thing. I called a bunch of people back in March, and I got so much conflicting information that I don't think that a lot of the people actually know the own rules. So, I mean, I believe you, obviously, but just, I don't, the information I got must have been wrong. Because, it, like, it doesn't make sense, especially if they're taking away that restriction, like, why they would even have that anymore. Who knows? Harry Tornado says, I found... 150 cans at Goodwill for 92 cents a piece, sold in lots of two for 35 bucks free ship. Took about six months to sell all of them except that one. You made a bunch of money off that, man. That was a great, that was a really, really great flip uh, that you found. I made over a thousand dollars selling that hairspray. Awesome. <laughs> Doyle says that Hustle at Home Mom is good and also a straight shooter. Good. I only do business with straight shooters. None of those curvy shooters. You never know where the bullets are going to go. I'll have to watch your videos. Baron Von Deel says, what is the preferred Android app? Ooh, I don't know. Someone who uses Android hopefully can chime in. To check Amazon pricing, profit and ranking, if I do not have an Amazon account. So my understanding is you have to have an Amazon account. It doesn't matter if you're on Android or whatever. I mean, I guess in that case, the best app without an Amazon account is going to be the Amazon shipping, you know, shopping app. Um, but I'd say probably what you should do is make an account, an individual account where you don't pay a monthly fee and uh, use that to use Amazon seller account. Uh, I second Baron Von Deel's question. Profit Bandit wants 10 bucks a month, and Amazon Seller App doesn't give much info. Amazon Seller App gives you enough info. That's what I use. I used to have Profit Bandit. I like it. I like it more, but my credit card expired, and I never switched it, and I began using the Amazon Seller App, and I didn't notice a difference, so I'm just sticking to it. Um, I think both. I think both are good. 
Profit Bandit has better UI in my uh, my experience, but Seller App does what you need it to. Question: Do you have any advice for DIY accounting and bookkeeping? Need cash flow right now, but can't afford CPA. Want to set up foundation well for future. So I don't have any advice on that in specific, but what I am doing this Friday, actually, I have a meeting with uh, a company who wants me to promote their bookkeeping app. Um, it's not bench.com. I actually passed on that a few years ago because I wasn't really totally uh, sure it was a good deal. Um, it's been a few years now, so I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to promote them because they're going to pay me to, so I don't want to like ruin that deal. Uh, assuming it's good. If it's not good, I'm not going to do it. But um, if it's the kind of thing that I keep using, I'm going to recommend that to you guys. And uh, it's marketed in our initial you know, emails back and forth. It's marketed as like an all-in-one bookkeeping accounting app for um, online sellers. So we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. And hey, while you're here, we're at 97 likes. 97 likes. So let's give it a big thumbs up and get over 100. Uh, Goat Cheese asks, is it payability? No, payability does two main things. They do business loans, which I, I have not done. And they do like invoice factoring, essentially, which I have done, uh, which basically means Amazon pays you every two weeks. You can use payability to get paid every single day. The catch is you pay a 2% uh, fee. So in my opinion, that's a lot more useful. Uh, but certainly there are people who don't like it. So, you know, do your research. I have used it. I think it's fine. But there are a lot of angry people who'd be like, oh, well, that's 90% APR. Well, then don't use it for a year. You know, it's that it's that easy. <laughs> use it for a week. That's what I recommend. Okie dokie. Where were we? Megan says, when selling on eBay, at what point do you recommend switching over to a business account. Uh, so I have always had a, as soon as I could, as soon as it became an option, however many years ago, I have always had a business account. So I recommend doing it immediately. Um, obviously, some folks are not in a financial situation where that makes sense. But if you can afford it, I would say do it just because it's, uh, I don't know, it's what you're going to be at eventually, so why not use those tools that they're going to offer? I think you can't use Terapeak without a business account, and I like Terapeak. Terapeak's fine for price searching. There's some questions that I missed earlier in the chat, so if I missed your question, feel free to ask it again. And if I missed your super chat, uh, remind me, and I will, I'll get back to that too. What else do we have? Ramblin' Man, Hank Williams, and uh, Kenny Rogers, The Gambler. Two vinyl albums. What are these? Kenny Rogers, they're kind of... I don't know much about grading vinyl. Hank Williams, Ramblin' Man, vinyl. It looks like that one sells for... Uh, huh, 20 bucks, not bad. And then the other one, Kenny Rogers, The Gambler. That one sells for, it looks like, um, about 15 bucks as well. So we'll say, we'll say, uh, 25 bucks on those two. Maybe that's a bit high, but I've been going low on everything else. And that puts us up to, uh, let's see, one, 160. 160 so far. I'm getting nervous. Real Hustler says, Amazon keeps deactivating my listings due to potential high price errors. It's at their warehouse already. Should I have it returned or lower the price? The only rock band on FBA. I would say lower the price by a dollar until it goes active. And if you're not happy with that price, take it back to you and put it on eBay. That sucks, but it's going to cost you like 30 bucks in shipping fees, but that's, you know, what you can do. We got a baseball. We got a catcher's mitt. Wilson A500. This should sell, right? Uh, come springtime. Wilson A500. I know that catcher's mitts actually sell pretty good as opposed to other stuff. I think it's a youth catcher's mitt, right? Um, is this youth? 
I don't know. I, I don't really play baseball. Um... I don't know. Beal. Got some guy's phone number on it. I think it's an adult. It fits my hand, right? Looks like I might have to put some leather on there or whatever. Probably I can get, uh, looks like 25 bucks might be a fair price for this. Uh, I see some lower, some higher. I think a lot, a first baseman's mitt. Yeah, I'll say it looks a little small to be a catcher's mitt. Uh, this one says youth. 10 to 13, 12 inch, all positions. I don't know. Um, right-handed throwers, right-handed thrower, right-handed new with tags. Uh, this is kind of out of my comfort zone, but I would guess probably I'll get 15, 20 bucks for it. So we'll say 10 profit. Puts up, up to 170. Oh, some more yarn. We got three of these bad boys now. Uh, I think those were going for like 15 a piece, right? So we'll say we'll say another 10 on that. 180. Oh, look at this! Two Transformers pillows. Two. So I can be a set. I'll put this set at probably 60 bucks. So we'll put another 25 on the top, and that puts us over the money mark. We're at 205. So five dollars profit. Thank you very much, Josh. You fool. You're giving away money. <laughs> We've got a video game, uh, Star Wars The Complete Saga. Uh, I think this goes for about 12 bucks on Amazon FBA. That gives me about $6 profit, probably. So we're at $2.11. I sell this game a lot. That's how I know that. Oh, nice. H.G. Wells, The Time Machine, and other stories. This is the Scholastic Library Edition, fourth printing, 1966. The way you can find that out is uh, generally opening up the beginning few pages, and down there at the bottom, all the info you need to see is right there. Uh, the copyright date is not always the, the book printing date. August 1966. Probably just five bucks, I'm not sure. H.G. Uh, Wells, The Time Machine, 1966, Scholastic is what I'm, I'm Googling, to, or I'm uh, eBay searching. Nine bucks. So if I can get nine bucks for this, it'll cost me, if it sells in the next few weeks, it'll cost me like $3.03 to ship this out. Uh, or if it you know sells between, but before, after, after the seasonal price uh, increases go down, It'll cost 280 to ship, so I'll make another probably you know let's see, six bucks off that, five fifty. We'll, we'll just say five bucks, and uh, that puts it two sixteen. Some more yarn. We have four of these yarns. They're all Turin granite. Uh, let's see, another another fifteen bucks on there. Uh, we'll say fourteen bucks to make the numbers even. That puts us at two thirty. So we're at two hundred thirty bucks. There's only a few items left. I don't know what this is. Ooh, it's a mystery package in the mystery package. I think it's like a cell phone case, probably. <laughs> it isn't a cell phone case. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I think that Josh put this in there. To, to make me think that I wasn't going to make a bunch of money, he put it at the bottom. You sneaky guy. I just bought a Switch. So I'm going to play this. <laughs> but it's selling for... How much does it sell for? I'll look it up on eBay just to maintain a little bit of consistency. Uh, let's see. I thought it was a cell phone case. How stupid am I? Switch Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Looks like it's selling for uh, 40, I can get 40 bucks off this on on, uh, on eBay. So probably what I'll do is I'll play it for, I'm gonna play this. What I'm gonna do is play this uh, until it sells for 60 bucks because I think it'll sell for 60 bucks right around Q4. 
I can't believe it came in here. So sneaky, Josh. So sneaky. I think he... he that's how you know he's a good content creator. Because he set it up where I'd have a big reveal at the end. I wasted it. I wasted it on a live stream. We got a few more items. It's a switch. That would be that would be insane. Uh, Atari trackball. <laughs> oh, I'm getting such good video game items. I have no clue what this sells for. I have never sold one. Atari trackball. Okay, that's not the... The Atari 5200 trackball sells for a lot of money, but this is not the Atari 5200. Looks like this sells for 30 bucks plus shipping. Um, I own an Atari, so I can actually test this out to see if it works. Do these have an external power supply? No, they don't. You know what's neat? These are made in USA. Right there, you can tell that. You see that? Yeah. Made in USA. How many video game parts are made in USA right now? In <laughs> 2020. Zero. We got a remote. A Harman Kardon remote. Probably worth a lot of money. Um, let's see. The way that I find the model number on these is usually, and I don't know for a fact, if you pop off the back battery panel, uh, there should be some, like, a serial number on the back of these bad boys. If I can uh, open this up without breaking it. Um, okay, I was wrong. I don't see a... I don't see a, a number on there. Um, yeah, so I guess all I'm going to have to be able to do is uh, I can go off of a uh, Harman Kardon compact disc changer remote. It looks like it's old as shit. Harman Kardon compact disc changer remote. It looks like this exact remote sold for 10 bucks. I wonder if that's... Who is this? Who sold this for 10 bucks? Somebody in Young Harris, Georgia did. Then our final item, a big patch. New 9-11 World Trade Center Fallen Heroes 10-inch patch. And it's got the Port Authority, the Fire Department, and the Police Department. Uh, a memorial patch for the back of like a denim jacket maybe. Um, very cool. I'm not sure what these sell for. I'll type in 10 inch, 9, 11, Memorial. Looks like that's going for about 10 bucks. So 10 bucks. So it looks like when it's all said and done, I, I got so excited when I went through that Switch game that I didn't even add to the price. We'll say 40 bucks on that. We'll say uh, 10 on the patch. We'll say five on the remote. Is that everything? That puts us at uh, about $300. So yes, I'm making money off of this, most likely. That's gonna be like my assumed profit. It might be a bit higher if I can find a way to sell some of those items on Amazon, which I probably will. But I'm trying to give you guys like the, the worst case scenario. Uh, so worst case scenario, even though it took me five months to open that up, I should probably make about 100 bucks off that. So Josh, thank you very much. Um, you're a good guy. Uh, check the battery compartment remote for information. Works on many brands. Yes, that's what I did. Uh, I did not find anything in there. Um, but I just, I found the remote on eBay with a quick search. Okay, now back to some uh, questions. So we've got about 40 minutes left in the chat. Uh, maybe maybe less than that, about 33 minutes to be exact. And I want to open this up to any questions you have at all about any way to make money. You know, what do you want to know? Uh, where were we? I'm going to start going through some of the older questions. Uh, and then if you have some more, just feel free to put them in the chat. And if you're watching a replay and you've made it this far, uh, you can put the questions in the chat. 
Okie dokie, where were we? Dana says it's, it's a, a child's mitt. Yeah, it is a youth mitt. Um, I think it's a youth mitt. Probably I'll get, I think, 20 bucks for it, I think is what I, I said. Uh, Crystal says, as a buyer, I love Amazon more, and even as a seller, I like Amazon more than eBay. Yeah, I prefer Amazon to eBay too, but eBay is not bad. Judgmental Care says, hi guys, my schedule keeps changing. Just got here for 30 minutes or so. Glad to have you here, and don't worry, all these live streams get posted on my channel for anyone to watch. Bryce says, where do you source video games to flip mostly? Mostly I'm doing large buyouts. So I'll, I'll see a Facebook ad, you know, a Facebook marketplace listing, or I'll see someone uh, on like Mercari. You, on eBay, it's kind of harder to get good deals on lots of video games because there are so many people who are searching to do that. Um, but on Mercari, it's okay. On like OfferUp, it's fine. Uh, you know, call around, like, ask your friends. If you're, like, my age, if you're, like, just turned 30 or around that age, uh, ask your friends if they want to sell their video games to you. Because a lot of people my age are kind of like, okay, I'll buy a PS5, but what the heck do I do with my PS3? You know, it's, like, two generations old. Those games still have value, and uh, you can hopefully buy them for, like, you know, a buck or two a game. Stephen Ellis says... Just over my second month selling on Amazon, good job, uh, books, have created a deal with a used book score to do scanning for me. I pick up the books once a week. I've also made a deal with a thrift store for free books. Steven, you're killing it. It sounds like you're already setting up plans and processes in place to make you a lot of money. Steve then says, I also sell some on eBay, more random stuff. I find or books that I can't sell on Amazon. On track to do four thousand dollars my second month. Steve, you're hitting the ground running. Baron Von Deel says, "Knit yourself a hat and scarf with the yarn." I should get my girlfriend some knitting stuff for her birthday, or for Christmas, I guess, and give her that yarn. Wow, how many? This is a question for Stephen Ellis from Mr. Leon. How many hours a week do you put in? Can you make that while holding down a part-time job? I am guessing the answer is yes. Just if you want my answer. Oh, and then he answers, uh, What? where else were we? Uh, Baron Von Deels. Well, I guess I'll read, I'll read Scrap Alex first. WBK, you should sell mystery boxes to help clean out your warehouse. I definitely buy, and thanks so much for keeping it real. I actually have about 25 um, 16 by 12 by 12 boxes that I have pre-made to sell, but I haven't listed them yet for you guys. I should put them on my website. Dang, I should do that right now. Scrap Al, or that was uh, what I just answered. Frank Hernandez, how do you get approved to sell this shop from the Dollar Tree? Uh, we talked about this earlier in the chat. Dana brought up Frontier Co-op. You can buy topicals from Frontier Co-op and uh, you'll get ungated that way with the invoice. Uh, Mr. What, where were we? For books, if the Amazon seller fee is too much, do you recommend Amazon FBM? No, Frank. If you're concerned about fees, you're concerned about the wrong thing. If you see a millionaire, that millionaire didn't get where they were because they paid less fees. They got there because they made more profit. So do whatever makes you more profit. And if the book is not profitable, FBA, it probably isn't worth your time to sell Merchant Fulfilled individually. What you should do is either lot it up by genre and sell those on eBay, utilizing better media mail rates, or just trash it. I sold my collection of N64 stuff for like 600 bucks over the past two months. Thanks for the info. I'll call all my friends. Bryce, that is a true salesman attitude. Uh, Jay says, how was the mystery box from Harry Tornado? It was good. I'm, I'm going to make 100 bucks, I think. I watched both of you guys. I just started reselling in August. September, I made $500 in sales. October, I was at 1000 This month, I'm shooting for $1,500. Jay, 
That requires a round of applause. Everyone, Jay's doing it. You start off slow, everyone does, but you build up your store and you have these recurring months of sales and a year later, you know what you're doing. It's not easy the way chewing gum is easy or working at McDonald's can be easy, but it's not so hard that anyone here can't do it. I have, if you're watching my videos, if you had the presence of mind to come to my channel, click on the video, I am positive that you can do this. JD says, hope to quit my job in six months or so. So JD is doing this while working a day job. Good for you, man. Good for you. Steve Phillips, any experience selling bad VCRs or combos for parts? Also, we didn't get the horn at 200 bucks. I know, well, someone has to super chat $11. I don't make the rules uh, for VCR. So I did try parting out VCRs. It was not worth it. I, you get about two bucks for, I mean, it made more sense just to cut the cords and scrap the cords for 10 cents a piece than to do that. Um, the DVD combos, you can get maybe 10, 15 bucks uh, in parts. The ones that are really good for parts are the DVD recorders, um, the DVD combo recorders, stuff like that sells way better for parts in my opinion um, because they have, some of those have like little computers inside of them that can be replaced. Uh, and there's actually people on eBay who buy up uh, damaged DVD recorder combos and stuff like that and repair them and sell them. Okay, where were we? Mark says, Jay, you have to remember you need money to keep flipping because that's a problem. I have to reinvest thousands a month so I can barely pay myself. Mark, if you're not making enough money, then you're not selling expensive enough things. I, I, both your comments I've seen so far, you're not looking at your failures and adjusting. You're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So go back through your last month's sales, see what your top 10 most profitable items were, and only focus on sourcing those. And if you can't get enough items to pay for your rent, you're gonna have to find another way to make money. Uh, because obviously, the situation you're describing is not working for you. And it's not a, a, a matter with reselling as a concept, because there are tons of people here who are doing it, myself included. So you have to look at the things you're doing and uh, shave away the inefficiencies, shave away the $5 profit items and focus on the $50 profit items. And if you can't find those, research them more because there's nowhere in the entire country that you can't resell on eBay. There are people in Northern Alaska doing it. There are people in Florida, in Maine, myself in Michigan, people in Colorado, Wyoming, all around the country. You just have to know what's in your area. And the only way you can do that is by researching things, taking notes, cutting away the bad stuff, focusing on the good stuff. You really are, are stuck in this cycle and the only person who's gonna break you out of the cycle is yourself. I can say all I want to you, but you're somewhere across the world. I know you can do this. I know you have the ability to do this. You just have to believe in yourself and say, okay, I am smart enough to make my business work for me. I can figure out the most profitable avenues. I can follow those avenues. You're hearing all these success stories, man, and it's not, they're not lying. Flip the World says, I don't know. I've seen a lot of people choking on gum. <laughs> yeah, true point, true point. Let's see, we got Steve Coleman here in California. Jay says, my sole source of products is the good old Goodwill. Mostly clothes, but I'll buy anything. Dana Jimenez says, Home Depot clearance has some good items too. Yes, very true. Michael Norton says, thank you very much, Walter. You opened my eyes to selling VHS DVD recorders. It has made me great money. Good for you, Michael. Steven says, I find books to be the easiest as you can find them super cheap or even free. I agree. 
uh, and you can make the most profit with the least amount you have to put in. 100% agree with you, Stephen. Uh, Amra Karma says, I just basically got back into reselling since March, uh, for obvious reasons. Feels really good, honestly. I break it up by door dashing. Normal jobs are for normal people. You have a great attitude, and it sounds like you're doing what works. Desiree, how many things you sell online at one time? Uh, let's see. Currently, I've got probably 4,000 items in my Amazon store and only about 160 on my eBay store, but... That, that's going to grow to about probably 500 over the next over this week. I have to list a shit ton of stuff on eBay. Um, and then I, I'm routinely selling like about 25 or 35 items at a local auction every week too. It's because I spend like 290 bucks to make 300 profit. Uh, if you're making 300 bucks profit on your items, you shouldn't have a hard time paying yourself. Um, it's just, the, the math isn't adding up, man. There are things you have to cut away. If you're making 300 bucks every sale, are you, you know, you have to cut away the chaff. And if you can't, in this current point, find enough, you know, 10 of those items a month to sell, you're going to have to start doing other, other ways to make money. There's just no, there's no way around it. I mean, there's no, I don't know what to tell you. All of the complaints you're making are not issues with reselling. It's issues with your particular process. Jay, let's see. Uh, Mark says, joined late. You were mentioning tax service. Did you ever go over it? Also, keeper tax and payability are not working. Yeah, the payability, I don't know why it's not working. It works for me. You just go go.payability. Dot com slash WBK. And it works. It works for me. Uh, I don't know why it's not working for you, but I just checked it and it works. The Keeper link, they took that down. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I think they might be having money problems. I don't know. Maybe you have pop-ups or like you have like a, a, a browser or uh, ad block on your browser, maybe? I don't know. But I'm checking Chrome right now, and it works totally fine. Uh, the payability link. And then the tax service, I have a call with those guys on Friday, uh, and maybe next week or the week after we'll have a video on it. I'm not totally... Well, no, I'm, I'm going to have to use it for like a month before I can recommend it, I think. Okay, so we are at 125. We've got uh, 20 minutes left. We have a few more questions. I think the selling part is easy. It's putting the item in a box and shipping it. Can you talk about packing stuff and how you ship? I, what do you want to know? You're going to have to be more specific. I have a video about how I package like VCRs, but everything else, if it's like a video game, or like a CD or a t-shirt or whatever it is. Um, I just pop them in one of these bad boys, a poly mailer, and ship it out. I have 50 golf clubs, but I don't know how to ship them. So you're going to have to buy a 48-inch box. I have several 3x3x48-inch three by three by boxes I bought on Amazon. I pay like a buck fifty per. I've got them stacked up over there, and I use those boxes for... Um, for golf clubs. I sell a lot of golf clubs too. A lot of people, they uh, they don't want to buy boxes because boxes cost, oh, a buck fifty per. But you have to, it makes your life so much easier if you just buy the right size box. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, what you can do, and I've heard about some folks doing, is they go to like golf pro shops and look behind the golf pro shop and their like recycling dumpster and pull them out of there. Desiree says, where do you sell bulk items? Uh, I don't really sell bulk items. Cami Eikoff, I think I'm seeing a comeback on VHS. I don't think you are. What about Disney VHS tapes? Um, uh, they're not going to make a lot of money off of it. 
I, I picked up this VHS tape. I'll sell it for about 20 bucks, but it's gonna take me like a year to sell it. So I don't think that there is a VHS tape comeback. Those are pretty old. If they're like, you know, like B grade cult horror movie VHS tapes, that's a different story. But Disney VHS tapes, no, not really. Let's see, someone said something. The ch for whatever reason, the chat is slowing down for me. Um, I'm not getting an updated chat. I'm seeing it on my phone. So uh, let's see, at one at 128, someone just said something. Let me see if I can maybe refresh this or something. Okay, yeah, just refreshed. Have you ever sold on commission? What percent did you take? I take 70% because it's a pain in the ass and I don't want to do it. Michelle says, you have to find what works for you and the skills you have. FBA used books is pretty easy as long as average sale price is good and you price to sell you can't mess up. True, very true. How do you find boxes or make them for large, odd-shaped items? Uh, it, give me an example of what. Here we got a $5 super chat. I don't know who it's from. It hasn't shown up yet on my, on my computer, but I see it on my phone. So whoever sent it, thank you very much. And uh, if you have a question, the question will pop up pretty soon. I heard that there's been an issue with live streaming the past few days. So I guess we gotta wait. Someone should give me six bucks if, uh, if they wanna hear the money bugle. I would be so disappointed if we end this live stream in 15 minutes and we don't hit the $50 mark. Janine says, I see a lot of resellers say they don't want to buy an item because it's hard to ship. Are there any items you do not want to ship even if profitable? Yes. China. Glass. Where? Uh, figurines. I bought a snow globe that I took to a local auction, even though I, I'll only get like 40 bucks for it, and it could have sold for 90 on eBay because I did not want to mess with shipping a snow globe. It happens to me all the time. It's the kind of thing where it's just like, there's no... There's no shortage of ways that I can make money reselling stuff. Excuse me. And so the, the less time and stress and mental energy I, I spend on like how to package something for like that I'll make like 50 bucks off of, the more I can, um, you know, I, let's say it takes me 45 minutes to package up a snow globe. Uh, I would much rather spend that time doing, you know, YouTube keyword research or stuff like that. Uh, it just is not like the ROI is not there both like uh, physically and like emotionally. Where were we? Yeah, it's not working. Sorry, the live, the, I'm, maybe I can pop it open again. The live chat is slowing down. I see a lot of questions, so what I'm doing now is going back on YouTube, and uh, we'll see if I can reopen the live stream chat. This has never happened before. We have 135 people here. Please give it a thumbs up uh, while I while I try and fix this um this issue. It was five bucks from Fox News Regulator. Good answer on shipping stuff. What about books? For books, I again put them in a poly mailer like this. If the book is especially rare, I might put it in a box. Uh, and I, I ship media mail, uh, unless the book is worth more than 50 bucks, and then I ship priority mail. Okay. So I'm gonna pop open the chat again because it looks like it just slowed down for some odd reason. Uh, thanks for the super chat. We're only six bucks away from the money bugle which I, I, it's a necklace. I'm talking to remove dead air. 
Mr. Leon says, how do you keep track of what you have and what your profit will should be? I started a spreadsheet, but it feels like a headache. Surely there's a better way. So I don't keep track of individual items. I keep track of money in, money out. So like last month I spent uh, about $2,000 on my warehouse rent and sourcing products and shipping. And I made $11,000 so, or a little more than that. So I made nine grand. That's like, you know, that's all the, that's as, as, um, as low level as I get. Cause I don't really give a shit about the individual items. Uh, if I ever want to go, like what I do care about, not currently, but in the past is I care about what categories of items I sell more of. Uh, and that's all available in Amazon and their business reports. If you can find someone or some place that is installing shop lights, take their boxes. Those work great for golf clubs. I grabbed some from a new store opening, long shot, but if you can find them, they work. That's a tip from Rebecca Norman. Rebecca, thank you. And let's see, where were we? JD says, it's my purchase price, then I got the sale price. Oh, you're answering someone else in the, in the chat. Peter Beetle says, Scotty Flex and Seal is great for shipping odd-shaped items. I'm not sure what that is. What is a Scotty Flex and Seal? Life by Melinda says, I sell vintage finds and glassware. It is so profitable, but it's such a pain to ship. I've definitely passed on profits because I don't want the headache. Yeah, I'm the same way. I just don't, I don't want to deal with it. And I don't, it's nothing that I enjoy. You know, I don't really enjoy it. So why would I do it? Local auction. How do I get into one? Uh, where are you from? Type in the region that you're in the United States in Google plus local auction, and start going through the search results. Bryce Barabosa says, how would you ship a four-pound three-ring binder book? That's Is it a book or is it a binder? That's 10 by 10 by 2. I'm thinking bubble wrap and a custom-cut box. Any tips? If it's uh, a book, I don't see a problem with just putting it in a poly mailer. I really don't. Wreaths in oversized boxes cost an arm and a leg. If someone's willing to pay more in shipping than the item costs, okay, but not good money. Agreed. Where do you get your liquidated items from? I've got them from local auctions. I've got them from bstock.com. I've got them from liquidation.com. I've got them from techliquidators.com. I've got them from all sorts of places. Jacqueline says, have an amazing day. Thank you. Jacqueline, you have a great day, too. You should wear the bugle out whenever you address someone. You blow it to get their attention. I think they might not like me. Advice on selling off a collection? Told my neighbors I resell was gifted decades of Playboys. Debating leaving the collection intact versus selling year sets versus individually. So I don't know this in, uh, in particular, Tay, but what you can do is go on eBay uh, what you can do is, if you want to know, know how to price stuff, go to wbkultra.com slash FAQ. And uh, I have a video linked there, how to look up pricing. And you can pretty easily just search collection. You can search decade. You can search by year. You can search individual uh, listings because there certainly are some, uh, I'm sure, covers worth more than others. Hey, Steve Phillips. With nine minutes to spare, we got six bucks from Steve. That puts us at $50. So, Steve, we give you this. And also, everyone, this is going to be a headphone warning. If you're wearing headphones, take them off. If your volume's up loud, lower it. If you have uh, sensitive ears, take, them, take out your headphones. Turn the volume down. Because I'm going to be using this horn... And it's going to blow out a lot of air. Uh, and it's going to explode your eardrums. It's going to make it sound so bad. You're going to hate me. You're going to unsubscribe. You're going to send me death threats. But I have to do it because these are the rules. These are the rules. The rules clearly state that when I get 50 bucks from you guys, I blow this bugle. 
Is everyone ready? I gave you fair warning, okay? I gave you fair warning. And now, let me just wet my whistle. bugle oh we did it Woo! you know some people drink coffee to get them waked up I just hyperventilate <laughs> popping bottles boy oh boy I think Josh is gone but you know what that was for you Josh that was for the one and only Harry tornado <laughs> And everyone who gave money to it's for all you you can share that the the eardrum bleeding. Ralph Saldana says I want to start selling books. How do I become a seller on Amazon? Google how to start selling on Amazon. The first link is the Amazon seller sign up page. Click on that and then sign up. It's not that hard. You can do it. I have faith in you. <laughs> Bryce Barabosa just sent six trumpets. I thought that those were champagne bottles when I just saw them pop up on my screen. So, uh, <laughs> they're trumpets. Yeah, I should just start buying more, uh, like, brass instruments and have, like, a hierarchy, a tier <laughs> of, how, of how annoying I get based on how much money I... You know what I should do? I should do an eight-hour live stream with, like, insane reach goals and say at $10,000, I will... Uh, play the alto saxophone. I don't know. That would be that'd be so funny. <laughs> Callie Bigger says, "Bad time to walk in." That was annoying. See ya. <laughs> ah, screw you, Callie Picker. We don't even want you here. This chat room loves loud noises. They love their eardrums being blown out. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. That's so funny. Ah. Uh. Could you imagine being the kind of person who, like, leaves a live stream because they don't like what they see in the very first second? Like, obviously, there's a story going on here. You know, you can't just jump in in medias res and expect to know what's going on. Also, I said, I said headphone warning a whole bunch. A whole bunch. So, Callie Picker, fuck you. <laughs> oh, God. Michelle Jade said, ha, 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 thanks for the warning. My beats would have killed me. Yeah, definitely. Kid needs a peanut butter sandwich now. Gotta go. Thanks for all the valuable info. Have a great week. You too, Life by Melinda. And everyone, even you, Callie Picker, even though you're gone and you disrespected me and my bugle, I still wish you the best of weeks. I want a PB sandwich too. That would be good. I'm doing meal meal plans right now. I use Fresh and Lean. It sucks. I canceled it. It was started off. It starts off those these meal plan. You know, you you pay them two hundred bucks a week, and they send you a bunch of meals. They always start off great, and then by week three, it's the same thing. Over and over and over and over again. Oh my god. Anna Karma says, Did I mention I have misophonia? If you don't know, misophonia is a strong reaction to sounds, oftentimes uh, like beyond the, the acceptable norm. It's an interesting, uh, interesting disorder. Okay, rare. I just Googled it. Fewer than 200,000 cases per year. Chronic can last for years or be lifelong. Uh, such as dripping water, chewing, snapping gum, or repetitive noises. Yeah, just sensitive to noises, I guess, right? You know what noise I hate? I don't understand mukbangs. 
You, ever, you know what mukbangs are? We're in the last three minutes, so I'm just gonna talk. <laughs> you know what mukbangs are? Mukbangs are when you watch someone eat food. It's like Korean for food show, I think. And um, they go, and I, I just cannot stand that noise. The smacking of lips is terrible. I don't like it either. Um, <laughs> don't be a shithead, California picker. Someone said. Rebecca says, how do you handle something you can't find a comp on? Like one of a kind things, eBay auction. So what I do is I'll look up, I'll Google it first because Google is a great search engine. They have lots of things that can help you. Uh, I'll use Terapeak uh, on eBay to, to check the last 12 months of listings. If both of those don't show anything up, uh, I'll look for a comparable listing. So like what I've done before, I use this example a lot. I sold an autographed um, book. I forget, it was uh, an autographed Bernie Sanders book. Not a big fan of his politics, uh, but it was very funny to me um, that I that I could sell a Bernie Sanders book for so much money. Uh, anyways, that's a different video. I couldn't find any comps on this particular book, and so what I did is I looked at comps on Bernie Sanders' other autographed books or other autographed memorabilia, uh, saw how much more expensive those autographed books were than the actual regular book, uh, and then used that equation basically to price what I had. So if it's one of a kind where it's like an autograph thing or it's the kind of thing where there's like, you know, uh, related items close to it, you can kind of get a, a general vague idea off of that. Um, but sometimes you just got to go with your gut. I would not uh, do an auction unless you start off very high because oftentimes that one of a kind stuff, people aren't looking for it. And so uh, on an auction, you know, you're only going to have a week of it being active, potentially. Uh, and the person who wants it, who might pay considerably more for it, might not know it's there. So, uh, I would say just more and more and more research. I I'm always going to say, if you don't know the price, do more research. Um, sometimes there's just no answer. And in cases like that, you, you, you I guess it still is considered research. But it's not like exact research, it's uh, like peripheral research. Good question, Rebecca. Very good question. Andrea says, those meal things are time consuming to make. So yeah, this is not like Green Chef where they send me items to make food with. It's like they shrink wrap a meal and I microwave it for like five minutes and 30 seconds. It's pre-cooked, I'm just like heating it up you can use an oven too if you don't want to use a microwave. Uh, and that that's what I'm doing for those. And I'm going to do a video on it. I'm not, I wouldn't do it again. It's not, it isn't like, it isn't gross, but there's not a lot of variety. Not a lot of variety, which, you know, what do I expect, right? It's a service, but it's just not what I really like. No disorder here. It's just so fucking loud and annoying. Says the Texas bandit. Dude, I told you. I gave everyone a warning. I accept no responsibility. Ellen Almager says, What a great chat. Thank you, Walter, and everyone. Have a great day. Goodbye, Ellen. Betty says, Home Chef is not bad, but you have to cook. I'm a bad cook, so it helps me. Watching someone eat food is gross to me, too. Sassy Ripley Fold. Did I miss it? I didn't catch who won the gift cards from your Dollar Tree Christmas video. I'm announcing those on December 1st. Um, it's gonna be, if you wanna enter that still, you go back to my Dollar Tree Christmas uh, retail arbitrage video, and I'm giving a $25 gift card to the best comment, and a $25 gift card to the worst comment. So everyone is eligible. You can do a bad comment or a good comment, I don't care, we're giving away two. Yeah, but that's, I probably should have only done like a week or two. I think I just arbitrarily said uh, December 1st, but probably I should have said in my next video, we'll announce the, uh, we'll announce the, um, the winners. Yeah, I think we're going to have like two or three thumbs down in this video from people who don't like me blowing the money bugle. But again, I don't make the rules. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love I love saying that. Uh, so for those jackasses who are gonna inevitably thumbs down the video, two of them so far, those motherfuckers. So for those two jackasses, let's give the video a big thumbs up. Let's see if we can hit 150 thumbs up. That'd be fun, right? Uh oh, I'm three minutes overdue. I gotta pick up my girlfriend at work. So I think I'm gonna get out of here. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, do not worry. Uh, you can ask these questions in the chat below and I will do my best to give you a really helpful answer. Uh, I'm trying to consolidate all of my answers on the FAQ page for my website. Um, I hope that that's more helpful to you guys. As always, uh, my goal is to help you find new ways to make more money. Make more money. She's got two legs. Let her walk. I don't think so. Uh, I believe in uh, giving people the support they need to do the things they want to accomplish. And at this point in time, the support that my girlfriend needs is uh, rides to and from work. So I am gladly doing that, especially because she works right by a thrift store so I can make it part of my routine. Um, it's, uh, it's all good in the neighborhood. I'll see you guys later. As always, don't be a shithead. And they get out there and make some money because nobody's doing it for you.